got mail. Hey church guy, this is church girl here. And I want to just let you know you are absolutely not funny. Your jokes are actually quite lame, and I find your stereotypes offensive. Not all of us are airheaded and ditzy, so I'm going to give you a chance to impress me. Instead of responding to mean tweets or church issues that, frankly, have no bearing on me as a single person, I want to challenge you to respond to the Bible. You think you can handle that? Okay. Challenge accepted. Bring it on. So, welcome to I'm Scared of Church Girls, the video series where we are in search of men, millennials, and hope for singles out there in today's church. So I'm going to give you some Bible verses that church people have been using to encourage us singles for a long time. And I want to know your thoughts on them. I don't think scripture is meant to be made fun of. I think it's serious. I think it is important. It's essential. It's powerful. But I can't say the same for the people that use it. So church guy, are you ready to take on the Bible? Our first verse is Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Everybody knows this one. It's like you just come to me and we talk about delight and desires and, you know, desires. And I have desires. We have a lot of desires. Um, I mean, desires. Our next verse is Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. I've had people come up to me multiple times and say, Luke, you know, I know it must be hard being single. And trust me, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has a plan for you. He has a plan to give you a wife. He has a plan to give you a family. He has a plan to give you a job. He's money and whatever else. And Verse number three is Isaiah 54, 5. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your redeemer, the God of the whole earth he is called. I'm really not into looking for a husband, but if I had to use that verse to encourage me, I mean, I feel like there's a mama joke in there somewhere. Man, your mama's so fat that her belt is the equator. Oh, burn. Yeah, I don't really know what to to do with this passage. I think it's just, you know, God is big and I love Jesus. Yeah. Verse number four is from Song of Solomon itself. From chapter three, verse five. It says, I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or the does of the field, that you not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. The church I go to says, you know, Song of Solomon, that is for married people only, so I guess I'm not allowed to study those passages, so church girl, I don't know what's going on here, but do not be awakening my gazelles. That would be really weird. Gazelles. Verse number five is coming from Matthew, and this is going to be Matthew six thirty three, which says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Things added unto me. Oh my goodness. That verse is for me. I knew it. This verse was totally for me. It's like the Bible was like a love letter written to me. Huh. Where have I heard that? Let's be honest. How many times have you ever been down or just discouraged and somebody walks up to you and they said, you know what? I want to give you this Bible verse. Now, granted, they're doing this out of love and concern and they believe what they're doing is the right thing to do because after all, 
If you really believe that the Bible is the word of God, then somehow reading these scriptures is literally reading God's voice to you and therefore it should change your life deeply because that's what the Bible is supposed to do. But what happens when it doesn't work out that way? What happens when those words that you hear are just simply words? How do you respond to them? How dare you? Uh, so there you go. Have an awesome day. And I just want to give a shout out to Church Girl. Thank you so much for participating in this video. You were awesome. And I, I have no idea how you really feel. But, you know, I hope I did a good job. See ya. Okay, church guy, I have to admit, your Bible knowledge is actually quite something. Um, and I feel the spirit moving. Uh, it was, is it the spirit? Uh, there's something moving inside me. I feel like it could be, but could it be the L word? Could it be not love? The church has never prepared me for this. I need to call you 1 Corinthians 13.